bright and early, ready to start the day with uh, Sabrina Polly's second workshop talk, uh, Formulas for the Local A1 Degree. Good morning. Um, yes, today I'm just talking about formulas. Um, so uh, what I want to uh, start with is recall that the A1 degree assigned to uh, homotopy class of um, maps of the motivic N sphere. An uh, element of the growth in the grid ring of K. And uh, I already told you yesterday that um, if I have an element in here, this splits up as a um, sum of local A1 degrees, and I want to give you formulas for this today. Um, so the exercises today will be only computations of these uh, for these formulas and doing computations in here. So now I will do the most detailed introductions I've ever done of the Grofendig Wittring. So you're all set for the exercises. So for those of you who know this well, well, just enjoy your morning coffee. It will only last like five minutes <laughs> or 10 minutes maybe. Okay, so here. First we want to understand this. So let's uh, start with what are the elements in there. So for this let Okay, be a field and uh, the uh, finite dimensional k vector space. Then a uh, symmetric bilinear form over k is the following. It goes from v times v to k. Yeah, and this is a symmetric bilinear form. over k um, if, first of all, it's k bilinear. So it's k linear in here and in here. And uh, it's symmetric. v of x, y is the same as v of y, x uh, for all x, y in v. We say that v is non-degenerate uh, if the following is an isomorphism. So what I can do is uh, I can just take out one of the v's and now go to homomorphisms over k from v to k um, using uh, this symmetric bilinear form. So let's see, x is sent to, uh, y is sent to, v of x, y. And we say that v is non-degenerate if this is an isomorphism. So the elements in here should be non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form, but this is too many. So we do only look at this up to isometry. So let's say, see what isometry is. <coughs> so we say that V1 and V2 are isometric if um, there is an isomorphism of vector spaces like this such that uh, V2 of phi x phi y is the same as V1 uh, x y for all uh, x y in V1. This defines uh, an equivalence relation, so we can look at equivalence classes. So let's look at equivalence classes, so now we take non-degenerate uh, symmetric bilinear forms mod isometry and consider this as a, as a set. Right. So 
Now, the first thing, what I want to do is I want to give this set an algebraic structure. First, I introduce some addition, namely, I can take, I already have two non-degenerate symmetric bilinear forms here, and I can take the direct sum of them. Like this. Um, so I have an addition defined, defined here. And actually, if I add this here and call this M, this is a commutative monoid. So I have an addition, but it's, it's not a group because I don't have inverses. Uh, I can also take the tensor product. like this and uh, have another law there. Um, so now this is not uh, only a commutative monoid, but a semi-ring. And now uh, what I want to do with this, I want to turn this into um, a group with respect to this addition or even a ring. And how do I do this? I, uh, there's a way to, to do this um, uh, like in a, with a, in a kind of universal way. So if I have a commutative monoid, um, then I can uh, form its group completion, so I don't know, maybe let's call it G of M, group completion. There's different notation for this. Um, you could also, sometimes you see K of M or even K zero of M. And how should this be defined? This should be an abelian group, um, namely satisfying the following universal co uh, property. If I have a monoid mor uh, morphism here, this should be, should uniquely factor here. And one can easily construct this. Uh, you can figure out yourself how, how to construct this. Um, and this always exists, or you just go on Wikipedia and read it there. And now I can tell you, finally, what this is. This is really, so the Gropen de Gwitwing. of K is the following. It's the, the group completion of this M, and now I also call this M, but I really mean this M, so this monoid of um, isometry classes of non-degenerate symmetric bilinear forms. over K. Sorry, this is a little small. It says isometry class of non-degenerate symmetric bilinear forms over K. <coughs> All right, so um, maybe uh, in the talks earlier this uh, week or the last weeks, you, you heard that uh, the elements in here are quadratic forms. And uh, you could also think of it like like this, namely, if a characteristic of k is not equal to 2, then really non-degenerate uh, symmetric bilinear forms over k are really the same as quadratic forms or non-degenerate quadratic forms over k. Um, so, uh, where would I send uh, B here? Uh, I, w I would send it to Q, and what does uh, Q on X? It's just B of X comma X. And you can also just take this as a definition of a quadratic form, or of a non-degenerate quadratic form. So here Q goes from 
k vector space to k. So uh, from, from now on, I think I will use both terms, but mainly probably quadratic forms because it's a little shorter to write. Um, and the next thing I want to do is, I told you what that we were going to do computations in the growth and degree ring of k. Um, so I need to tell you how to compute in there. <coughs> so uh, let's um, first find a nice presentation of GW of k. And now let's assume that the character is not equal to 2. First of all, then I can assume that it's quadratic forms. And also, in this case, um, it is true that any quadratic forms, quadratic form, can be uh, diagonalized. What does this mean? This means it's uh, really of the form you find a uh, basis of your uh, k vector space so that you can write q of x as a1 x1 squared plus dot 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 a n x n squared, where n is the dimension of the vector space. Well, I guess you. Maybe these just are uh, k to the n. Anyway, um, right. Or how uh, you could also think about this as the, the quadratic form um, with representing matrix, a diagonal matrix. Here there are zeros. And uh, so any every um, non-degenerate quadratic form is. Uh, can be diagonalized, so it has the form where it's uh, the same class as the form um, which is of a uh, diagonal form. So we have the following generators for the Golf and Dick Wittring. Um, which one writes as bracket A. I'm sure you've seen this. And this is just the class of the quadratic form which sends x to A x squared, where a is the unit in K. Maybe one warning. Uh, uh, in the exercises, you will be asked to diagonalize uh, a matrix. And this is not the same as just um, uh, finding the eigenvalues, you really, um, it's different. You diagonalize with the um, uh, STAS. But yeah, we will do this in the exercise. Okay. Um, so we have the following generators, and these follow the following relations. So. Um, the first relation is a b squared is the same as a in brackets for a b in the unit in k. And this really makes sense because um, if you have uh, the quadratic form a b squared um, times x squared, you can replace x by bx and you get the quadratic form a x squared. So they uh, represent the same class in the growth and the grid ring. Um, also, this uh, is easy to see. So A times B is equal to AB. And now the last relation you need, and then you have all of them, is that A plus B is the same as a plus b in brackets plus a b 
a plus b uh, in brackets. And here you need a, b, and a plus b not to be 0. And that's all the relations you need. And then you can treat this growth in the grid ring just algebraically. To see the, uh, I encourage you to do the exercise to see the, the third relation, just really show that these two classes are isometric. It's not so hard. Uh, but one exercise that will also be on the exercise sheet today is the following, which will be the most uh, important relation for, I think, the last talk, because we'll need it all the time. So also remember it. A plus minus A, where A is a unit in K, is always 1 plus minus 1. And maybe you've already seen this 1 plus minus 1. This is uh, called H for hyperbolic form. So yeah, first of all, you will show this relation today. You can do this um, just using, by just using the relations or by thinking about this as uh, um, symmetric bilinear forms and show that these are isometric. Both works. Um, Also, later in the lectures, I will sometimes not do computations in the growth and the ring, but just in the width ring of k. So what is this? Um, it's the growth and the ring, and now you mod out by the ideal generated by this hyperbolic form. But because of this relation, this is really just uh, you want out by all the integer multiples of H, and this is the W of K. Maybe let's do some examples. Oh, no, before we do examples, I want to introduce the rank. So if I have a quadratic form like this, I can assign an integer by just taking the dimension of the k vector space v. And this doesn't change up to isometry, so I can take the, the class of the quadratic form and assign the dimension. And now uh, this defines a uh, rank homomorphism from the uh, growth the grid ring of k to the integers. So for example, if k is algebraically closed, then I claim that the rank, isomor uh, rank homomorphism is an isomorphism. Um, so why is that? Uh, if uh, um, k is algebraically closed, um, what are the rank 1 forms? Um, uh, they are all, I can identify them all with the just bracket one because of the first relation. So we only have uh, one generator, um, and these two relations are just one times one in brackets is one, and one plus one is one plus one, so these are trivial, so we get an isomorphism here. So for example, the growth and the grid ring of the complex numbers is just the integers. Um, the width ring here is just C mod 2. Yesterday, we also talked, we started with the field um, of complex numbers, and then we uh, passed on to the real numbers. So let's also look at the, the real numbers now. So if k is the real numbers, uh, then uh, 
what I can do is, by uh, Sylvester's theorem, I can take a quadratic form, and uh, I can always bring it into um, the form where it has diagonal matrix with uh, ones and minus ones. Or in other words, we know that if uh, k is the real numbers, then um, by the first relation, um, I can identify each generator either with one or minus one in brackets. Now, uh, if I uh, call the number of uh, entries one here r and the number of minus ones s, then And then the signature of this class is R minus S, and this also defines a map from the growth and vectoring of R to the integers. And this, this actually works for any ordered field. You can always diagonalize it and have uh, positive entries and negative entries, and you can define the signature. But uh, now, uh, how can we uh, determine an, um, an element of the Grofendig vitring of R? So I claim that an element of GW of R, this is completely determined uh, by its rank and its signature. So it's a little more information here. So there's one last thing I need to introduce. Namely, if I have L over K, a finite separable field extension, then what I can do is I can take a quadratic form over K, uh, over L, sorry, and uh, uh, obtain from this a quadratic form over K by just doing the following. I uh, first ta uh, take Q and then I compose with the field trace from algebra. So this is the field trace. And I get a, a quadratic form over k. If this is non-degenerate, this is also non-degenerate when this is separable. And I get even get the map of growth and grid rings, which I just denote by trace L over k, gw of L to gw of k. And there is an exercise today which uh, asks you to compute the trace of C over R of just the form one. Like this is really all you need because um, the trace is linear, so we just need something of rank one. And in, in C, we already have seen that the only rank one um, class of rank one form is this one. And the exercise is computed, is, this is H. This is a useful fact. I think this will ap appear later also. Okay, so this is everything I wanted to say about the growth and the glittering. Oh, it actually took some time. So are there any questions about this? I think now you have everything you need to solve all the exercises. Okay. So now, uh, the next thing I want to do is go back to what we did yesterday um, and, uh, and um, first define local A1 degrees and then give you formulas for it. So, 
So recall from yesterday that um, if we uh, have a continuous map of n spheres, then the degree of f uh, can be written as the sum of local degrees like this. Um, right. And now we want to write down uh, formulas for this for the local A1 degree. So let's maybe recall a formula from differential topology for this classical local A1 degree. For this, I want to assume that y is a regular value. Um, what does this mean? So here, y is in here, and x is in here. Um, this means that, well, locally at all the preimages, uh, the determinant of the Jacobian doesn't vanish. Or locally at all the preimages, we have a homeomorphism. And in this case, um, we have the following formula for the local um, degree from differential topology, um, uh, which is just <coughs> you take the sign of the determinant of the Jacobian of f at x. So now um, let's generalize this, or let's uh, do this um, for the a1 degree. And for this, let's assume we have a map from a n k to a n k. And let's assume that we have x close point, which is mapped to 0. Then uh, let's take a uh, Zariski open neighborhood. Um, of, uh, of x, and then we can define the local degree as follows. So maybe let's, let's recall how this is defined. So we take uh, mu small ball around x, b small ball around y, <coughs> and then one way to define it is really we just take u and quotient out by u minus x. And then we go to v and quotient out by v minus y um, with f. And just take the degree of this. So this is the local one degree. And now let's try to mimic this here. So in the A1 homotopy category, we can also take the cofiber. So this makes sense. Um, and we can also go. Uh, I guess now I want this to map to zero. Uh, by excision, I can identify this with a n, a n k minus zero, and this can be identified with p n, p n minus one. So what can I do here? Here I can also identify this. Uh, so here, this, uh, this identification is because a n sits in some p n. So this is also excision again. Here I can do the same. Take p n k over p n k minus x. But here I can't necessarily do this identification. I can only do it if I have a k point. Like 0 here is a, is a k point. But here, uh, x might not be defined over k. But what I can do is, and that's something Stephen already, already told you in his talk, is I can take something called the collapse map. So we only need a map in this direction. So here, this is a collapse map. So here, I actually get the map from the motivic n sphere to the motivic n sphere. And uh, Jesse Kass and Rita. Kirsten Wickergren showed that the following. Um, first of all, they defined the local A1 degree of f as uh, maybe let's call this f bar to be the degree 
say, one degree of x bar. And they show that the degree of a, of a map, well, OK, now I wrote it from an to an. But uh, um, this also works if it's from a motivic n-sphere to a motivic n-sphere can be written as a sum of local degrees. So we really just mimicked what we did here. So let's hope that this formula also holds. And it does. This is also a theorem by Jesse Kass and Kirsten Wickergren. And they so show that um, if you assume that if this is the residue field of x over k, if this is uh, um, separable, and uh, the determinant of the Jacobian of f at x doesn't vanish. So this is the same assumption as we have here with the <coughs> regular value. And then this formula also works. So this local a one degree of f is you take the determinant of the Jacobian of f at x you stick it into brackets, and then you trace down to k. So this is the first formula for the local a1 degree. Uh, if I have time, I'll tell you a general formula where we don't need these assumptions later, but you will at least see it in the exercises. But uh, before I do this, I want to go back to the enumerative problems from yesterday and see how uh, this relates. So, uh, um, right. so recall from yesterday that uh, if we had um, a vector bundle um, over x, and now x is smooth. Uh, proper uh, k-scheme, um, then one can define the a1 Euler number as the sum of uh, local indices um, where sigma is a, a general section and we go over all the x such that sigma of x is 0. And what was this local index? It is uh, the following. You take the local a1 degree at x. And uh, we also saw yesterday that uh, we can um, choose Nisnevich coordinates in the trivialization. So sigma trivializes to a map from a n um, residue field of uh, x. So Mark told me yesterday I actually have the base change to here, but it doesn't make any difference. So please correct this. So we have a, a n um, residue field of uh, uh, x, and then we can trace down. So now uh, we have a formula for um, the local contributions in the enumerative problems we saw yesterday. And let me very quickly go back to um, at least one of them. Um, namely, we had the example of the Zeus theorem. Um, where this vector bundle was O of D1 plus O of Dn. Uh, 
and we wanted to to count the intersection points um, of hypersurfaces HI, which were given by the vanishing of some Fi of degree Fi uh, of degree degree Fi is di i from one to n. Um, and uh, we saw that these fi give me a section here. And the zeros of the section correspond exactly to the intersection points of the hypersurfaces. And thus, we can compute uh, this um, quadratic Brizou theorem uh, as the A1 Euler number here. And what does this turn out to be? This is the sum of local indices of this uh, section where x is in the intersection of the hi. And by this formula, um, this can be identified with the sum of the trace from the residue field to k of the determinant of the Jacobian of now really just these fi. X. And this is also something we saw yesterday. Yeah, yeah, right, thanks. So you want to assume that all, that's, that's a good point. Yesterday we had the assumption that all the, uh, that we have a zero dimensional intersection, but for this actually we really need uh, that the intersections are transverse so this doesn't vanish. But you can always pick, just pick general ones um, where this holds. We also need this later when we do the tropical story. Yeah. And I'll show you, I'll show you later how to write a more general formula here. And we saw that this is, this is McKean d1 the n over 2 over h uh, times h. And now we've learned that we can take both the rank and the signature. If we take the, uh, the rank, we get the classical Bizula back, which is just the product of the di's, because h has rank 2. And if I take the signature, I get 0. And right, we needed one more assumption, sorry. We need the relative, the orientable assumption that n plus 1, the sum of the di, is uh, mod 2, like this. And let me just note that this is no coincidence that we get uh, these two numbers. <coughs> because I think that oh, I, I saw this diagram already in, in Kirsten's talk, and maybe you've seen it before. But let me remind you that if I take here if I take here the A1 degree, I will land in the growth and dequittering. But then what I can also do is take, uh, let's assume that K is subfield of R, then I can take C points and well, what does this turn into? If I take C points, I get CPN over um, CPN minus one, so this is an uh, S2N. And if I take real points, then I get just SN because this is just RPN, mod RPN minus 1. Um, so here I can take the degree, and I end up in the integers. Here I take the degree, and I end up in the integers. And this diagram commutes if I take the rank here and the signature here. Let's just keep the name. This also works for the lines on a smooth cubic surface. As a 
captured. So here we took, had to compute the A1 Euler number of the third symmetric power of the dual of the top logical bundle of the Grossmannian of lines in P3. And Jesse Kirsten, uh, Kirsten Wicke when computed that this was 15 times 1 plus 12 times minus 1. And uh, again, if you take the rank, you get the 27 back. We had to the beginning of last lecture. If you take the signature, you get the 3 back. OK. So now, uh, what I want to do uh, for the last 20 minutes is give you a more general formula for this, which works without these two assumptions. But before I do that, let's uh, uh, ask if there are any questions. Uh, uh, where? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, you, uh, I guess, f finitely many pre images. Yes, thanks. Yes, that's what you need. Okay. So, now, uh, I'll give you uh, a general formula, and this really all builds on uh, the work of Shea Storch, um, who wrote a commutative algebra paper where they um, assign to a complete intersection a uh, non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. And um, work of uh, also, Kass Wickelgren and uh, um, Bachmann Wickelgren shows that this uh, um, non degenerate symmetric bilinear form, or the class of it, is actually um, the local A1 degree. And from, from this construction of Sria Storch, which is really just more of an existence uh, construction, one can extract explicit formulas, um, and there's a I'll first uh, review the history of this. So this all starts with, um, let's assume we have a complete intersection um, like this. So this could be given by a map from a n k to a n k as we had before. Let's assume this is a complete intersection. Then Shea Storch found a way to assign to this um, non degenerate symmetric bilinear form. And this also works in the local situation. So if x here is mapped to 0, and let's say uh, x corresponds to um, the maximal ideal m, then I can localize at m. And this still works, so we get the non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. So work of Kaus Wickelgren and uh, Bachmann Wickelgren shows that this class of this uh, Shea Storch form is actually the local A1 degree at x. And now one can use this construction of Sria Storch to get uh, an explicit formula um, for this. So the first one who did this was uh, Eisenbach 
and Harold Levine. And um, uh, at the same time, Kim uh, Kim Shiasvili, uh, who did this uh, over R. So they already identified this Shea Storch form with the local degree over R and found a formula for it. And then Eisenberg asked the question like, this is a purely algebraic thing, so this should be working in a more uh, greater generality. And that's what Jesse Kass and Kirsten Wickedwin showed that um, this also works in the case that the residue field of X is K. Uh, so this formula from, or this class from, um, or this formula here, they give, is a formula for the local A1 degree. And this was uh, generalized by a bunch of people, in particular also Thomas, who's here, Robert Berkland, um, Stephen McKean, so also here, uh, Michael Montoro, and uh, Morgan Opie, who's also here. Um, who showed that the same formula here works um, in case uh, we have a separable field extension. And now the last formula which works in every um, uh, generality uh, is that we can also drop the separable field extension. So this works when the determinant of the Jacobian vanishes. Uh, but we still have this uh, assumption, but here's a, uh, there is also now a formula by Thomas, um, Stephen, and me, which I want to present now. First, I d before I do this, one remark. Um, there is a Macaulay 2 package. called, uh, I think, A1 Brouwer degrees. Um, which can compute everything. Um, and it uses this, this formula. So there's also code by me, but this has many flaws. It only works in very special situations. So I really recommend using this really nice package. Um, there's a big group of people, so I can't mention them all, but Gabe is here and Thomas is here, so you can ask them about it, how to get it if you want to do computations. Okay, so now uh, let's um, finish with uh, writing down the formula for the Scheer-Storch form. So let's assume that we have a map like this, and let's assume that Q is k x1 up to xn mod out by f1 fn. So f1 and fn are just this f. And let's assume this is a complete intersection. Um, in particular, then this is a finite dimensional k vector space. And uh, let's choose a basis, let's call it A1 through AM. Let this be a basis. Then what I can do is I can write down delta IJ. And uh, this should be FI of now introduce new variables, capital Y1 up to capital J minus uh, yj minus 1, and then xj up to xn minus fi x1. And now I go up to yj, and then xj plus 1 xn. And I divide out by xj minus yj. Oh yeah, thank you. Like this, thank you. 
Yes. And then uh, what, I, uh, what I can do is I can take the determinant of this matrix with entries delta ij. Um, uh, but now I want to look at the image of this in uh, Q tensor Q. So Q was this. So Q tensor Q, um, you can view this as just you have K in the variable, like this in the variables, capital Y1 through Yn, and then X1 through Xn. So here, this is with the, I don't know, X variables here with the Y variables. So I look at this in here, and then this is called the multivariate resolution of it. Now, I have a basis for this. And um, tensoring AI with AJ gives me a basis of this. So I can uh, express this in terms of this basis. Um, so this equals BIJ with some BIJ and K. Um, let me just write AIX, AJY. And now one can show that this BIJ matrix, if I stick the BIJs here, these coefficients, into uh, a matrix, then this is a symmetric matrix. Uh, of uh, with non-vanishing uh, determinant. In particular, it defines a symmetric bilinear form or even a non-determinant symmetric bilinear form, and that's the formula. So. Let's write this here. What do you? Yeah. Uh, here. And then. I don't. Sorry, I don't get it. What? And and. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thanks. Um. Okay, uh, I wanted to write here. So, theorem. I uh, kind of want to write all the names. So this really relies on the construction of Scheer-Storch and then of the identification um, with this, with the a, a one degrees. So let me also write this, this maybe also cas. And then uh, Thomas, Stephen, me. Um, so the a one degree of f. Uh, I haven't defined this, but I'll just define it as the sum of all the zeros of f of the local a one degrees is just a class of this non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. But uh, the title of this lecture was uh, formulas for the local A1 degree, I think. <laughs> so let's make this local. So the whole story also works if I uh, localize at the maximal ideal M corresponding to X. So as before, it just corresponds to, to X. I localize here still have a finite dimensional k vector space and I can choose a matrix. So maybe put an x here to say that it's something different um, and put an x here to say that it's something different. And this all works. And then 
the local a one degree of f at x. Uh, it's just the quadratic or the non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form of this guy. Ah, oh, nice. I even have five minutes to do one example. And I picked out one example where the formulas from, from before didn't work. So first of all, I need to choose my field K to be not perfect. So I find like I have a have non-separable field extensions. So let's to do the one example we all know from algebra, namely take at P um, uh, and a joint T. And let P be an odd prime. <coughs> then let f be the following. We send x1, x2 to x1 to the p minus t, uh, x1, x2. And now let's uh, compute the, uh, well let's compute this matrix delta i j. So here we get x1 to the p minus x2 to the p over, uh, oh sorry, y1 to the p, uh, x1 minus y1, 0, um, uh, x2 and y1. And we want to take the determinant of it and um, by this formula. This turns out to be x1 to the p minus 1, y1, plus x1 to the p minus 2, uh, y1 squared, all the way down to x1, y1 to the p minus 1, plus y1 to the p. But now, in q or q tensor 2, q this is just t. Um, so I can replace this by t. And now um, we need to find a basis for Q, which is K, X1, X2, X1 to the P minus T, um, X1, X2. And I claim that the following works. You take just one, so one uh, up to X1 to the P minus one. And now if you write this down this Pij in this basis, um, so you have t times 1. So this matrix will have a one here. And then all of these terms will you, we have the diagonals just zeros, and then ones here. And the class of this is just t plus t minus one over two times h. So now, my time is up, perfect, and I'll stop here. Thank you very much.